Today we're talking about water methanol injection nozzle size. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Z06. We are out and about on the road today on one of the last days of the year. We're probably going to get, and it's a pretty chilly day outside. I want to say it's probably in the low to mid 50s right now. And in fact, here in a second, I'll throw up the scanners running in the background. I'm going to pop that up and a couple other windows so you can see what all is going on as we talk about water methanol injection nozzle size. And there's a couple different things that go into play, but the cool thing about it is, is Snow Performance has a nice new chart out there that shows kind of your horsepower and boost levels versus what size nozzle that you should be running. Now generally their kits come with two or three different nozzle sizes based on which platform you might be buying it for. And in the case of the Z06 right now, we are running the six, which is a six gallons per hour size nozzle. Um, but the big thing about it is, is for this actual platform and the amount of boost that we're making, we're probably gonna want something closer to a nine. But the, the real big question that comes down to it is, do I need to tune? Well, it's going to depend on how big a nozzle that you're running. Eventually, you're going to get to a nozzle size that's big enough that it's going to have a big enough in, impact on air-fuel ratio that you're going to have to start tuning for it because it's going to cause you to skew very, very rich. Now, a six on this setup is probably within the realm of not really needing tuning. We're going to look at some data here in a second and see what it says but it's also going to depend on how much of a blend of methanol that you're running. If you're running a 50-50 on a six versus what we're running now, which is windshield washer fluid, which is around, you know, 25%, 75% water, uh, you're probably going to get into that threshold of needing to tune. But right now, I think that we're probably fine on a six, but because we don't need to tune, it means that we're missing out on some potential cooling that we could achieve by running a bigger nozzle or a richer water to methanol mix and so that is something else to keep in mind now just because i'm running a six or a nine doesn't mean that that's going to be the setup that you want to run as i said snow performance has a really great chart that goes by horsepower and boost and gives you an idea it's a starting point of what the size nozzle that you should be running is for your platform so if you're running a 5.3 liter with 10 pounds of boost a six may be too big for your setup whereas it's just about right for kind of the setup that i'm running right now keep that in mind That's the other size of nozzle selection that you're gonna run into. Is this nozzle big enough to actually affect what I'm trying to accomplish? And you're, there's a couple different reasons that you can run water methanol injection. One of them being that extra fuel, especially on DI platforms. You see a lot of guys talking about running water methanol injection whenever they start to run out of uh, injection window. And then of course the main reason that most of us run it is to lower the IAT temperatures and to get us some boost resistance or some knock resistance under boost. So you can run too small of a jet where you're not getting any effect from some of that stuff. Just know what you're trying to accomplish whenever you go to start choosing your nozzle size. And so whenever we get up here, even though we have a fairly cool ambient temperature, we're going to have some temperature uh, heat soaked into the blower and things like that. And that's where whenever we do a long pull, we should be able to collect some data on the scanner that shows our manifold air temperatures trend down as we're going into boost and the water methanol injection starts working as opposed to what you would normally see is those temperatures trend up under boost. Now granted on cooler days like today, you will see that it kind of takes a dip before it trends up and that's because you start breathing a lot more cold air in and that cold air also has an effect on it. But 
As a heads up, we are injecting at about three PSI as our start point. We're maxing out by eight PSI. And now the question is, are we going to be able to get enough traction to even get into injection? So we're about to a good safe uh, straight line point where we can get on it. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to try and give it enough throttle to get some sustained injection through here. We'll see how it goes. really gets up and goes in. She's a little bit slippery on the backside because as I said, it is fairly cool outside right now. But that should give us two really good looks at data where we can go in, look at our intake temperatures, and look at our manifold air temps, see the differential of whenever we're building boost, that heat spike on top of some of the uh, intake heat soaking that's been going on from just these motors in such a tight quarters, generate a lot of temperature underneath there. And we'll see what kind of benefits that we saw off of that water methanol injection and whether or not we're at a good area on our AFRs or if we can go bigger and then on top of it, do we think that we can get more cooling? Okay, we're back at the house and I've got the data log pulled up here and we're focusing in on the two pulls that we did where we know we got into a decent amount of boost. And let me clean up some of this graph so we can see. Well, in fact, here's a pretty good indication. Uh, this is pull number one here and this is pull number two. You can see on pull number two that the boost was a lot more consistent and at this point, right about here, is where the water methanol injection should have turned on. And our temperature differential is what we're looking for as an indication on whether or not we're getting any cooling in here. You can see back here, this is where we were probably still at that stoplight. Temperatures creeped up to 130 degrees, then as we started getting going, just through driving, our temperatures are going to come down. Our manifold air temp drops down. And then we get into boost. And you can see a pretty decent drop right after that from water methanol kicking on. More so over here where our temperature is sitting about 123 degrees on the manifold air temp. And then our ambient at this point in time is 53 degrees. We start getting into water methanol injection. Our manifold air temp is going to go ahead and come down to 122. Our temperature differential drops out to 59.3. And so a slight increase or I guess decrease in temperature on that one, but not a lot. And if we go back and we look at our wideband readings up here in the corner, you can see that we're not really going much richer than we normally would. I mean, it, you can see here, getting into it, we're commanding 862 and we're hitting, let's go back to the beginning of this where we were about to the point of turning it on. We got a little leanness on transient. And then right about now, it's gonna turn on and we're seeing almost no change on AFRs. And then if we go all the way up, we're injecting, should be fully injecting on this nozzle now. We go into power enrichment and we're still hitting 84, 85, 0.84, 0.85 lambda, and we're, we're targeting 0.86. So this is a good indication, not only can we go to a bigger nozzle and see bigger gains, but we could probably go to a bigger nozzle even without tuning. We're on a six gallon per hour nozzle right now. We could go to a seven or an eight. I'm gonna go ahead and probably bring in a nine, 10, or even an 11, and we're gonna test those out in the next video and see whenever we get to the point where we really start running too rich that we need to dial this thing in. Uh, and then at that point in time, we're gonna compare the temperature differentials running those larger nozzles. And then we can also get to the point where once we get this tank of windshield washer coolant pulled down, since we're using the, uh, the uh, 
reservoir for the windshield washer, we can go in and throw in some 50-50 blend in there. We can spray that on the windshield too. It's, it's just a little bit stronger de-icer is all it's gonna end up being. Uh, so we can see what the difference between the 25-75% uh, blend is and the 50-50 blend is. After we go to a larger nodule though, we will get into the tuning portion of it. We'll talk about tuning for water methanol injection, but I just want to throw together a quick video that goes over kind of some of the things that you can look for whenever it comes to nozzle selection on your setup. So I want to thank you as always for stopping by the garage and remember ABT, always be tuning.